No. I was so thin as a child that my parents kept nagging me to eat. In junior high, I was 105 pounds at 5 foot 8. In high school, I was 130 pounds at 5 foot 9. When I saw fat people in public, I'd point and make remarks. And some people would point at me and make remarks about my being so thin. My mother said I was ugly because I was underweight. By age 30, I was a very muscular 150 pounds at 5 foot 10 and a quarter in my bare feet. By this time, I realized that women wanted nothing to do with me. And when I went out in public, I was angered that men with giant pot bellies were with beautiful women. By age 36, at 170 pounds, I married a beautiful woman, but she divorced me after six weeks. I fell into depression and turned to food and drink. The habits never went away and my body changed. Now, at age 55, I'm over 220 pounds. Over the years, I've learned much about this topic, which I'll share now. Until recently, it was socially acceptable to discriminate against a person's race, gender, sexual orientation, and various other categories. Since most groups are now off-limits, the anti-fat people movement sprang up so that people have somebody to pick on and feel superior to. In defense of this, YouTubers say that they're concerned about people's health. But if they say nothing about drug addiction, smoking, anorexia, bulimia, eating contaminated food, dehydration, which can be fatal, nor any other health hazard, they are liars! Their only concern is to get pleasure from acting superior to others. Some say that fat men should be disqualified from holding high positions of authority, such as judges or presidents, no president Taft on my wall there, or that their authority should be rejected. It was said that presidential hopeful Chris Christie had no business running because of his lack of eating discipline. Yet Americans elected alcoholic presidents Franklin Pierce, Chester A. Arthur, and Ulysses Grant. They elected adulterous presidents Thomas Jefferson, Warren G. Harding, Franklin D. Roosevelt, D. White Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Linda Johnson, and Bill Clinton. Talk about lack of discipline. And U.S. President William Howard Taft, the, the, over there, at 330 pounds, was an efficient president, better than average. Uh, know that body weight is very dependent on metabolism since the vast majority of adults not only gain lots of weight as they get older, they gain weight in increments according to specific ages. And some weight loss methods are far too dangerous. Never take up smoking, eating tapeworm eggs, or daily vomiting to lose weight. Diet pills, too, are often too dangerous as well, since they can cause heart attacks or strokes from increased blood pressure. As for diet and exercise, they're useless unless you adopt them as a permanent lifestyle change. Upon cessation of diet and exercise, your body reverts back to its previous state. And if you were once obese, your body will continually fight against all diets since it has been stretched out and has undergone chemical changes. And anyone who is very obese cannot get the same weight loss through exercise as someone thinner can. That's because weight loss through exercise is heavily dependent on the speed of your exercise and obese people cannot move as fast. Weight loss surgery is hazardous too and is only for the extremely obese such as those weighing over 600 pounds. People say that fat people are completely at fault since nobody in a concentration camp was fat. But pointing out concentration camps actually proves something different. That is, your weight is largely determined by the condition around you. And the condition around people in the United States is the food culture. M many people are overly susceptible to our massive amount of restaurants and food advertisements. And because of the food culture, many people turn to overeating after physical or emotional traumas or because they have a mental disability that leaves them vulnerable to the food culture. So, discrimination against fat people is discrimination against the unfortunate and the handicapped, oftentimes. Uh, furthermore, many people are harassed and browbeaten by family members to gain lots of weight. For example, I lived with my parents most of my life. My mother, who had thousands of cookbooks, would always do everything to get me to overeat by always controlling the kitchen, constantly overloading my plate, giving me extra large plates to disguise the fact that the portions were oversized, and arguing and hollering if I didn't eat everything, and turning, full, uh, and turning snacks into full meals. 
I battled it by throwing food out, feeding it to the dog, and taking up running. And my mother was always thin while she made fun of fat people. This is a common phenomenon. It is a, it is a form of control. Quite a few people do everything they can to make a family member as fat as possible so that the person is completely dependent on them. Considering these facts, if society doesn't uh, squash its food culture, it owes it to bigger people to provide double wide seats on airplanes and bigger washroom stalls and double wide seats in movie theaters, restaurants, schools, and wherever else bigger people must be accommodated and have no extra cost to them. Interestingly, over the years I've developed an attraction to fat women, including those who weigh over 400 pounds. I'm still attracted to uh, thin women, but heavier women uh, catch my eye more for whatever reason. Consider that breasts, along with all, all other womanly curves, are made of fat. And being fat alone does not equal the sin of gluttony. It could, but, but gluttony uh, occurs when someone uses extreme overeating as a fetish to gain weight or have someone else gain weight. Or, just, or they just don't care. They worship food or whatever. It also occurs when anyone will not share their food with a truly hungry person. So thin people can be gluttonous too. Being healthy at any weight is totally false, as extreme obesity and extreme thinness are both deadly. But anybody who calls someone a, a land whale or, or some such derogative is an idiot. If, if, even if you use polite manners, there is no anti-fat acceptance video in existence that is helpful and most are harmful. So if you have any such video, delete it. The only ways to help fat people is eliminating the food culture and acceptance. So before you become a busybody concerning someone's outward appearance, I leave you with Christian scripture, Matthew uh, chapter 23, verses 28 to 29. Woe unto you, hypocrites! For ye are like whited tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye are also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Think about it.